Good morning. Today is um, Wednesday, November the 9th. And we're going to start off with the uh, Psalm 3. The Psalm, psalmist confidently proclaims God as his shield. And this was a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Um, it only has eight verses. Predominantly orange for your faith and blue for salvation. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. 4. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. 5. I laid down and slept, I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. 6. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. 6. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Eight, the last verse, which is blue for your salvation. It says, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people, Selah. Okay, we're all still on the topic of the wrath of God. We don't have much time today. So we're going to go right into the reading of, of um, unfaithfulness, Joshua 22. We're reading the entire chapter as usual. It has 34 verses. And um, again, wrath is anger, fury. Um, um, we read national hypothesis, things that we as the nation do against the will of God, individual hypotheses, things that we individually do against the will of God, uh, sympathy with evil, having pity for those who commit hideous uh, things and actions and crimes. Uh, uh, unfaithfulness is what we're on today, and that's Joshua 22. I hope you're there already. And it says here the two and a half Eastern tribe return home. And then it uh, talks about a memorial altar is misunderstood. Okay. Um, the first uh, five verses are read for discipleship. And this is Joshua now. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Kedites and the half of the tribe of Manasseh. Two, and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Um, so he's saying, You guys have done all the commandments given to you by Moses, and you follow what I say as well. Three, ye have not lifted your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. You have kept, kept all of you, God's commandment as well. Four, and now the Lord your God has given rest unto your brethren as he promised them. Therefore now return ye and get you unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, on the other side of Jordan. So he's telling them to go to the property that they are to occupy. Five, but take diligent heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. I'm going to repeat that because that's what we're supposed to do. Okay? We're supposed to take diligently heed to do the commandments of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charge you, uh, not the politicians charge you. Okay? The, the servant of the Lord, Moses, charge you to love the Lord your God 
and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to that means to stay next to him and to serve him and with all your heart and with all your soul woolly okay six seven and eight blues for, for salvation so joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went unto their test their tents six now uh, on the one half of the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given possession in Bashan. But unto the other half, therefore, gave Joshua among his brethren, their brethren, on this side, Jordan, westward. And when jo Joshua went, and when Joshua sent them away also unto their tents, then he blessed them. Eight. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver, and with gold, and with brass, and with iron, and with many remnants, uh, divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. So they weren't going poor. They weren't a poor nation going to their prospective territory. 9 to, to 12 is silver for history. And the children of Reuben... And the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shilam, which is in the land of Canaan, to go into the country of Gilead to the land of their possession, whereof they were possessed according to the word of the Lord by the, land, the hand of Moses. 10. And when they came unto the border of Jordan, um, there are in the land of Canaan the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see. So they, they built an altar and this altar was obviously huge that you could see it from a distance. 11. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh had built an altar over against the land of Canaan in the borders of Jordan at the passes of the children of Israel, 12. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shalem to go up to war uh, against them. You see how quickly when... Uh, back in the biblical times when the nation would do something wrong, how quickly the church, the, uh, the leaders in the church would be to smash something down if they presume it to be something wrong that you're doing. Whereas today the church is muzzled, literally. Okay? They are muzzled. Thirteen. We may not finish all of this today. We may have to finish it in two days because it does have 34 verses, and I don't want to rush through it. Um, and the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the tribe of Manasseh unto the land of Gilead, Pinehas, and uh, the son of Elijah, the priest. So they sent someone over there to see what was going on. 14. And with him ten princes, he didn't go alone, of each chief house, a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was a head of the house of his fathers among the thousands of Israel. So each one was an important person, um, a one of authority, because they were the head of, of that house, of, that, of their father's house. Fifteen, all the way to twenty-nine, is all witnessing pink for witnessing and a lot of times i give you these colors but i don't really tell you what they are um part of witnessing would be teachings counseling questions instructions testimony ministry preaching evangelism gospel that's what we're reading. Doctrine. That's what we're reading. And sayings. All of that is included in witnessing. Okay. 15. They, and they went into um, the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half tribe of Manasseh unto the land of Gilead. And they spack with them saying, okay, that's 716, thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, 
What trespass is this that ye have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord, in that ye have built you an altar, and that ye might rebel this day against the Lord? So they're asking, and what have you done to a trespass against the, the laws of God by building this altar here? And 17 says, is not is the in inequity of pure too little for us from which we are not cleansed until this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord? 18. But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it will be seeing ye rebel today against the Lord, that had tomorrow he will work with the whole congregation of Israel. So he will be upset. With all of us because of your actions. And that was a great concern. And even when I grew up, it was still that same, that same type of retaliation was used in many ways. In school, for example, if one person would do something wrong, to make everybody else accountable for not only our own actions, but the actions of our fellow uh, classmates to the right and to the left. Sometimes everybody had detention for the actions of one, which is a good thing. That helps us to watch over each other, which this is not the thing today. Everybody's selfish careless, mindless, thoughtless. Okay. Uh, 19. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord, wherein the Lord tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us, but rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us in building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord our God. Okay? So instead of staying here and continuing to commit this sin, come and stay with us and take possession among us, and therefore not causing you to rebel against God. Okay? 10. I mean 20. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and what fell on, the, on all the congregation of Israel, and that man perished not alone in his iniquity? Okay, 21. Um, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel. This is their response, and uh, I'm going to read two more if we have time. Um, 22, we are in Joshua chapter 22, verse 22. The Lord God of, of gods, the Lord of gods, he knoweth, and Israel he shall know, if it be in rebellions or if in transgressions against the Lord, save us not this day. Hmm. Okay, 23, that we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer thereon burnt offerings or meat offerings, or if to offer peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require it. Hmm. 24, and if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, in time to come your children might speak unto your children, saying, what have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel. 25. For the Lord had made Jordan a border between us and you, ye children of Reuben and children of Gad. Ye have no part in the Lord, so shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. 26. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifice. 
27. But that he may be a witness between us and you and our generation after us, that we may do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifice and with our peace offering, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, 